One, two, one, two, three, four. It's time for maths with Mr. Thomas. Here we go with chapter nine, lesson number five, the area between two curves. Now imagine if you have two curves, just like this, we have y equals f of x and y equals g of x. And imagine we wanted to find the area between two curves. What do you think we could use, Lyba? Integration is perfectly right. Yes, you can use integration to find the area between two curves. The way you do it is you can take the top curve minus the bottom curve and then integrate. So to find the area between two curves, you take top curve minus the bottom curve and then integrate. So in the case above here, the area would be equal to the integral between, between A and B. So A is the lower uh, limit, B is the upper limit, and top curve minus bottom curve would be F of X minus G of X. So we'd work that out, then integrate, and then use your limits. So when working out the two areas, it no longer matters if they are below, above, 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 above or below the x axis. All that matters is that you remember to do the top curve minus the bottom curve. However, it does matter if the lines cross, so you do have to look out for that. So, let's go with an example. So example one, write down the integral that would represent the following area, just here in blue. So note, do the curves cross? No, they don't. So f of x is always above g of x, so that is absolutely fine. We don't have to do anything else with that. To work out the area then, the area is going to be equal to, well, what would the limits be? Well, you can see this area, it's starting at x equals a, and it finishes when x equals b. So the limits would be a and b. If you do top curve minus bottom curve, well on the top we have f of x, on the bottom we have g of x, so it's the integral of f of x minus g of x. And you're integrating with respect to x, don't forget to put in dx. One or two people probably thinking, what is the point in c? Well, c is just showing us the point that f of x crosses the x axis, but we don't need it. Remember, it no longer matters if they are above or below the x axis, as long as you do top curve minus bottom curve. So we don't need that point C. Let's try example two. Example two, write down the integral that would represent, once again, the following blue area. So this area here. Do the curves cross? No, they don't. You can see clearly that Q of X is always above P of X. So to find the area, we will integrate. And we will integrate, what would the limits be this time, Iman? Good, so the limits would be two and six, so the upper limit is six and the lower limit is two. Iman, finish it off then, what would you have? Good, you'd have Q of X minus P of X, and you're integrating with respect to X. So that is how you would find that one, perfect. Next one, how would you work out the shaded area here? So you can see that you've got this line here, which we're calling y equals f of x, and you've got this curve, y equals g of x. Well, the first thing that you probably notice is that the curves are crossing inside the interval a, c. So you can see the very start of the area that we want is at a, and the very end of it is at c, and the lines cross here at b. So because the curves cross inside the interval, we have to split the integral up. So we have to work out the area of this bit down here, and then we have to work out this area. So to work out area one, let's just go between a and b to work that out. How would you do it? What would you do, Sammy? Good, so for this area here between A and B, you can see the top curve, the one if you're coming down the way, top one will be F of X, and you'll subtract the one at the bottom, which is G of X. So that area would be F of X minus G of X, integrated between A and B. And for area two, for the other one, what would you do for that? Well, obviously that one there, it starts at B, finishes at C, so that is your limits. And the top curve this time, well this time you're hitting G of X first, so G of X is on the top, F of X is on the bottom, so it's G of X minus F of X. And again, integrated with respect to X. After that, how would you find the total? Add them together, perfect. So the total area is going to be area one, add area two. Example four, the shaded area is enclosed between the line y equals three and the parabola y equals x squared plus x plus one. 
as you can see here, we've got this shaded area. There's your line y equals 3, and there is your parabola, x squared plus x plus 1. Find the coordinates of A and B where the line and the curve intersect. How do you find when they intersect? Well, because the equation of this line is y equals 3, and the equation of the parabola is y equals, well, because they're both equal to y, they're both equal to each other. Or you could just think about it using substitution. So we're replacing y with 3. If you do that anyway, you'd end up with x squared plus x plus 1 equals 3. Again, because it's equal to y, and you know y is 3. Uh, solving that then, if you subtract 3 from both sides, remove the 3 over, x squared plus x minus 2 equals 0. From there to get x, you would factorise, brilliant. So factorising that gives us x plus 2, bracket x minus 1 equals 0. Make sure you have equal 0. Uh, the values of x then, you would have, if you've got x plus 2 equals 0, x would equal negative 2. And if x minus 1 equals 0, x would equal 1. So we've got these two values. Uh, we are asked to find the coordinates of A and B, not just the x values. So the coordinates, well, we know because they sit in this line y equals 3, the y coordinate's going to be 3. So your points would be negative 2, 3, and 1, 3. So that is going to be the coordinates. Hence, find the shaded area. How do you find the shaded area? What would you do? Integrate. Perfect. So for this one, you are wanting to integrate between, well remember we just found out these coordinates here, okay, we've got negative 2, 3, and we've got 1, 3. So x, the, the start is going to be negative 2 at the start of the area, so that's the lower limit. And the 1 is going to be the upper limit, so we're integrating between negative 2 and 1. If you integrate and you want the area between two curves, or the curve and the line, it's going to be the top minus bottom. So if you drag your finger down from the top of the page, that first one that you have to touch is going to be y equals 3. So you're just putting in 3, it's whatever y is equal to. And it's minus, and on the bottom, y is equal to x squared plus x plus 1. So it's a 3 minus x squared plus x plus 1. From there, what I would do is simplify this, but first of all, don't just start integrating that yet. Uh, get rid of the brackets, so we're still keeping the integral sign, still keeping our limits, still keeping d of x, and we're just getting rid of these brackets. So we're taking away x squared, we're taking away the x, and we're taking away that 1. From there, obviously, you've got the 3 take away 1, so simplify that as well. So again, keep the integral sign, keep the limits, keep d x, and then from there, once it's simplified, then integrate it. So integrating that, uh, you would have 2 would go to 2x, minus x, add 1 to the power, divide by the power. The x squared as well, you add 1 to the power, divide by the power, so this is what we would have. The limits are obviously 1 and negative 2. From there then, with the limits, you just sub them in. So replace x first of all with 1, then do minus, and then replace x with negative 2. If you do that, you would end up with something like that. Simplifying that, you would end up with 2 minus, this works out to be a half, this works out to be a quarter, minus 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, this works out to be 4 over 2, and that would give you negative 8 over 3. Simplify it some more. Remember, it's best to just do this one stage at a time, write it out in quite a few stages, and you will eventually get down to 1 and 1 sixths, minus negative 3 and a third, which will then become 1 and 1 sixths plus 3, and we'll change the third to 2 sixths, that way the denominator is the same, and that will then give you 4 and a half if you keep working through it. Remember, it's an area we want, so we write down units squared, or squared units. Next example. Example 5, calculate the green shaded area between the curve y equals x squared and the line y equals 2x. So how do we do this? Well, obviously we're going to integrate, and we know it's going to be top curve minus bottom curve, but we also need the limits. How would you go about finding the limits? What would you do, Andrew? Brilliant. We're going to have to find the points of intersection, and to do that, you're perfectly right, you can just use simultaneous equations. Because they're both equal to y, they're both going to be equal to each other. So you can say that x squared equals the 2x. Simultaneous equations, really it's just substitution that you are using. From there then, subtract 2x from both sides, remove the 2x over. x squared, take 2x to 0, take out the highest common factor. Because it's something times something, set them both equal to 0 giving you then x would equal 0, or x minus 2 equals 0, 
meaning x would equal 2. So we know then that the line and the parabola here are going to cross when x equals 0 and x equals 2. So that's the start and the end points of this green area. To work out the actual area then, as we just said, you want to do top curve minus bottom curve, subbing in your limits. So here, what is on top? Is it the x squared or is it the 2x? Good, it's going to be the 2x. Because if you drag your finger down from the top of the page, first one you touch above this area is going to be 2x. So it's 2x minus x squared. Make sure you put it in that order. Limits were 2 and 0. So 0 is the lower limit, 2 is the upper limit. Integrating 2x would end up with x squared over 2. The 2s will cancel out, just leaving us with x squared. Integrate the negative x squared will give us negative x cubed over 3, and the limits are 2 and 0. From there, just sub in the limits, giving you 2 squared minus 2 cubed over 3 minus, and if you sub 0 in here, well, 0 squared 0, 0 cubed 0, take them away at 0, everything's 0, so that will just be 0. Simplify that one, we'd end up with 4 minus 8 thirds, and if you've got 4 minus 8 thirds, just work that out, go and do a bit of work with fractions at the side, and you end up with 4 thirds squared units. Example 6. Calculate the green shaded area between the line y equals 5x, so here's the line y equals 5x, and the curve y equals 9x minus x cubed. So for this one, again, before we work out the area, we have to find where they cross. Make sure you're not just subbing in negative 3 and 3, because that is where this line crosses the x-axis. It is not these points up here. Okay, You've got to find where the line and the curve cross, first of all. So to do that, once again, you're just going to use substitution. Because y equals 9x minus x cubed, and y also equals 5x, you can set them equal. To solve that, well, you're best taking the x cubed uh, to the other side, or adding x cubed to both sides. So x cubed add 5x. Move the 9x as well, subtract 9x from both sides. So x cubed add 5x minus 9x equals 0, giving you x cubed take away 4x equals 0. To solve that, what do you do? Factorize, good. So if you factorize that, take out x as the highest common factor, leaving you x squared minus 4. Uh, from there, what could you do after that, Adam? Good, you factorize again because you've got a difference of two squares. x squared is obviously squared, 4 is a square number, so you can split that up even more. Woo! From there, x would equal 0, x add 2 equals 0, or x minus 2 equals 0, meaning then you get three values of x. Working out the area then, you know that the points of intersection would be at when x is negative 2, when x equals 0, and when x equals 2. However, what's different about this one? What do you notice? Yes, they are crossing over. There's this point that the line crosses over the graph. So, for this one, the curve crosses, the curves cross inside that interval between negative 2 and 2, just the very start of the area and the very end of the area, so you have to split up the integral as well. So you want to work out the area when the line is above this curve, and you then want to work out the area when the curve is above the line, so split that up. So doing that then, let's work out the area just down here first of all. So to work out that area, that's between 0 and negative 2. And we know if we do top curve minus bottom curve, well, we're going to have the 5x minus the 9x take 3 cubed. Before you integrate that, you are best just multiplying out your brackets. So we're taking away the negative x cubed, meaning we'd have a positive x cubed, and we'd have 5x minus 9x, which is minus 4x. Limits, 0 and negative 2. From there, you can integrate that. So x cubed would go to x to the power of 4 over 4. Minus 4x would go to minus 4x squared over 2. 4 over 2 would simplify to 2, so it's minus 2x squared. Limits are 0 and negative 2. If you sub in 0 and then take away and then sub in negative 2, you will end up with this. Simplify that, you get negative 4 take away 8. So it's negative negative 4, meaning then that area will be 4 units. Uh, squared units. After that, work out the second area, doing that the exact same way, almost. 
because you do the less time limits, you'd have two and zero. But if you do top curve minus bottom curve, well, this blue line is on top, first of all. So you've got 9x take away x cubed, take away the 5x. From there, multiply out the brackets, simplify that. So 9x take away 5x is 4x. We've still got a negative x cubed. We're integrating this time between two and zero. Integrate that, we get 2x squared minus x to the power of four over four. Sub in the limit, so sub in two, and then take away and then sub in zero. Well, two times zero squared, take away zero to the power of four over four, all becomes just zero. Meaning then we'd have eight take away four, which is obviously four squared units. Means then that the area of this part down here is going to be four. The area of this part up here is also going to be four. So the total area, just add them together and we get eight squared units. Let's do one final example. Example seven, the curves y equals x squared, just here in blue, and y equals two x squared minus nine, just down here in red, intersect at k and l as shown. Calculate once again the green shaded area between these curves. So the first thing we need to do then, before we do top curve minus bottom curve, is we need to find the limits. We need to find where they cross. So how do you do that? Yeah, you've got it. Once again, use simultaneous equations. So set them equal, just use substitution. So the 2x squared minus 9, because that's equal to y, x squared is also equal to y, you can set them equal to each other. Subtract x squared from both sides would give you x squared minus 9 equals 0. And from there to find x, you can factorise. So you'd have x minus 3, x plus 3, meaning you've got the two values for x. You'd have 3 and negative 3. Meaning then, here the x value is going to be negative 3, and here the x value is going to be positive 3. To work out the area you're wanting to integrate, once again, top curve minus bottom curve, but we've also got these limits with three and negative three. So you can sub all that in. Top curve is going to be x squared. We're taking away the bottom, which is two x squared minus nine, between three and negative three. From there then, x squared take away negative nine uh, would give us the positive nine. And you've also got the x squared take away two x squared, which will give us the negative x squared. If you integrate them, that will give you nine x minus the x cubed over three. Keep the limits with three and negative three. Remember the bigger number on top. From there, sub in three, then take away, sub in negative three, work that out, and you will end up with 18, add 18, which gives you 36 squared units. Anything you're unsure of, just go back and have another look at any of these, but you should be able to do all these questions in here for extra practice. Good luck, let me know if you need a hand. Well done.